Okay, so before we talk about instruments themselves, we need to talk about this important concept here called endogeneity and its opposite, exogeneity. Um, and we've kind of talked about it throughout the semester so far, but we just haven't called it these things. Um, so to do this, we need to introduce our favorite question that we've been asking throughout the semester, just because all econometricians love this question, which is, does education influence your earnings? Does going to college for an extra year cause you to earn more later? Um, and so if you draw a simple DAG like this, we have education causes earnings. Hooray. Um, we could write this as a regression model. It would look like this, um, where you have earnings is explained by education um, with an intercept term and an error term here. This is just the standard OLS regression right here. So let's say you have a data set of a whole bunch of people with um, the years of education they've had and their earnings. Could you run this regression right here and find the causal effect of education on earnings? Um, would this beta one be the causal effect? And hopefully by now, you know that the answer is absolutely not. Um, you can't do that because correlation is not causation. Um, we haven't adjusted for anything. Um, there are confounding factors. There's a whole bunch of other stuff. There's omitted variable bias, which you learned about probably in previous stats classes. Now we call this unclosed back doors where there's open pathways between education and earnings that we need to adjust for. Um, the, another reason for this, or another name for this, this whole reason why we can't just say education causes earnings, look at the effect, is because of endogeneity. There is endogeneity in this relationship between education and earnings. So what does this mean? Um, first, before we define endogeneity, we're going to define exogeneity. So an exogenous variable is the opposite of endogeneity. It means it's something in a model or a DAG that has the value is not determined by anything else in the model. So if you're thinking about a DAG, it means there's no arrows coming into it. Um, the node stands alone. Nothing influences that node. So if we look at this DAG right here, education, there's no arrows coming into it, which means it's just an outside thing. It is exogenous and then it causes earnings. So earnings has endogeneity here because there's an arrow coming into it, but that endogeneity is the causal, um, the treatment here that we care about. So that's fine. Um, but if there are nodes coming into our treatment or arrows coming into our treatment node, that's a sign that there is endogeneity. Um, so that's what endogenous variables mean. It means that the value of that node is determined by something else in the model. Um, so in a DAG, it means that it has, there are arrows coming into the node. Um, so if we look at this right here, education causes earnings, but ability causes both education and earnings. Um, and so we can say that education is endogenous because it has an arrow coming into it. Um, the ability arrow is coming into education, so it doesn't stand alone. Um, all by itself. So that, that's what endogeneity means. Um, it's a lot easier to think about if you just think about a node. Exogeneity means nothing is coming into it. So technically ability here is exogenous, nothing's coming into it, it's just all by itself. Education is endogenous because there's an arrow coming into it. Um, so that's, that's the difference here. So what would exogenous variation in education look like? What would it look like if education was truly exogenous? and nothing else influenced it. Um, it would mean that the choice to get more education is basically random. Um, there's nothing else that influences you to get more education. Um, and if that's the case, then cool, that is purely exogenous. There are some exogenous, like truly exogenous things that happen in the world. If there's an earthquake, you have no control over that. Nothing in the DAG really influences whether or not there's an earthquake. That's just a purely exogenous thing that happens. Um, but most of the time, um, nodes inside of DAGs are going to be endogenous with something pointing into it. Even if we say it's not, um, there's often something else that will cause a node. So it's kind of tricky to work with because when we're thinking about causal effects, what we want to know is basically um, what does the exogenous variation look like? If somebody is randomly assigned to get one more year of education, then we can measure the effect of education all by itself. It's basically an RCT. One of the reasons RCTs are awesome is, remember you get to throw away all of the arrows coming into it. So if you could randomly assign education here, you get to delete all of the arrows coming into it, which means that it is exogenous. 
Um, but in the real world, if you just have observational data and you don't randomly assign people to get more education, you can't delete those arrows, which means it's no longer exogenous, it is endogenous. Um, so how do we deal with that? It's tricky because technically that node right there, some of the effect on earnings is exogenous. Like some people might have opportunity to get more education just because they live closer to a university or something. And that is purely exogenous. But there are some endogenous things in there too. Ability is influencing education. So um, that's the tricky part here is part of education is exogenous, but part of it is caused by ability, which is here in the DAG. And so that's the endogeneity. So what we want to do is somehow remove that endogeneity and only live with the exogeneity. And then that tells us the effect of earnings on education. Um, you can do this with DAGs. We talked about this a lot um, a few sessions ago. Um, and the way you do this with a DAG is you adjust for the um, confounding nodes or you close the back doors. So if we could somehow adjust for ability, um, that would remove the endogenous part of ability on education and leave us with just basically the exogenous part. Um, and that would tell us the effect of education on earnings, getting rid of the back doors like ability. Um, so that's what adjustment does. Um, there's lots of different ways we can do adjustment. We could do a regression model like this, um, where we just say we have education, but also control for ability, stick that in as a control variable, assuming we have a column called ability. Um, we also talked about a few sessions ago how that's probably not the best approach because you have to assume that all the relationships between all of these variables is linear. That's rarely the case. And so instead you use matching or inverse probability weighting to adjust for ability, generate some weights, and then find the effect of education on earnings. So you can fix endogeneity and kind of remove that endogeneity with DAGs. Um, and so let's assume we have some data set that has um, the years of education in it and it has wage in it and we have this magical ability column that's measured somehow. Um, if we run this model here, if we just do education explain or is exp or wages is explained by education, just that simple model there, this says that an additional year of education causes your wage to go up by $13 an hour. And again, this is all fake data, I just made it up. Um, but that is going to be wrong because if we look back at the DAG, that is not adjusting for ability. There's some backdoor confounding that's happening. So if we instead control for ability, stick that in the model here, the official causal effect of education on earnings here is 7.76. So an additional year of education causes your wages to increase by $7.77 an hour, according to this. Again, totally fake data. But what this shows is that you can, like this is the naive model here where we're not controlling for anything, we're not adjusting for anything, this is wrong. And it's wrong because there's endogeneity in it. Once we remove that endogeneity and we adjust for the confounders like ability, then we can find the true causal effect. So that, that's how this works with DAGs. But what do you do if you can't actually measure ability? So let's say you don't have a magical ability column in your data set. Um, what do you do? You're left with something like this. Ability is unmeasured. And so you have education causes earnings. Um, it'd be really cool if you could just say control for ability. That's neat. But in real life, um, you can't. Um, ability here is inside this error term right here. So notice how it's red here. It would be neat if we could control for it. But in reality, we can't. It's uh, one of the unmeasured parts of this model here. Um, which means we can't just use inverse probability weighting and we can't do matching and we can't just control for ability. We don't have that column. So what do we do? Um, and that is where instrumental variables comes into play. That's also where these other quasi experiments come into play um, with regression, discontinuity or diff and diff. Those are strategies for handling the unmeasured and unmeasurable confounding. Um, so instrumental variables also lets us do that. Because wouldn't it be neat if we could somehow, the whole goal of this is we want to have the exogenous part of education. And it would be really neat if we could split education into two different parts here. If we could somehow separate education into the endogenous part, which we don't like, and the exogenous part, which we do like. That's the main focus that we care about. 
um, that isn't explained by anything else in the model. That's just the pure choice of getting an additional year of education just because that is where we, we care about the causal effect. So what we can do, though, is we can do some algebraic magic here. And it looks like this. So if we look at this first equation here, here's our simple naive model. We're saying earnings is explained by education. Um, but technically, this education has two different parts to it. It has an exogenous part, and it has an endogenous part. Um, controlling for ability and doing statistical adjustment, that lets us kind of get rid of this endogenous part. But if we don't have the variables to do that, we don't have the ability to do it in the data, then we can't just adjust for things. Um, so, in, so it would be great if we could somehow remove this endogenous part, treat it as part of the errors here. So all we're left with is the effect or earnings is explained by the exogenous part of education. And then all of this endogeneity is just kind of in this new error term here instead of epsilon, which is this guy here. Um, this is the Greek letter omega. It's just a letter that um, econometricians like to use for errors, because why not? It looks like an epsilon on its back, I guess. Neat. Um, so this is the goal here, is if we could somehow um, split our policy variable or our program variable, or in this case, education, if we could split that into two parts and say we want to measure the exogenous part of it and the endogenous part of it. We don't have a DAG to do that. So how else we, can we split it into two parts and only measure the exogenous part? Um, the way we do it is with this one weird trick, which is we use an instrument. Um, and by using an instrument, the whole purpose of doing this instrumental variable stuff is so that we can extract just the exogenous part. And we're left with only that. So it's kind of a way of adjusting for backdoors. Um, it's really useful when you have unmeasurable backdoors. If you can't measure ability, there's no magic column that lets you do that. You can still get around that if you can find some sort of instrument that lets you split education or your policy variable or your program variable into the exogenous part and the endogenous part. So that's the whole point of doing this, is to isolate exogeneity by using an instrument. So let's talk about what an instrument actually is.